after we had this good and wonderful vision in the Black Hills in 1994, we realized what a terrible impact and how we were captive to the trauma. And it's really not a trauma, it was a Holocaust and it completely destroyed our people. And so we realized that many of our people were disabled. So when we took kids and young people up there, they demonstrated to us that you can't just say, oh, get a job, oh, um, stop you know, letting your kids fall asleep with a bottle in your mouth. It's much more than that because their spirits are not present. So we brought back one of our ceremonies of calling back their spirits because they, in Western language, it's called disassociation, but it really is a spirit not being present. And so with a lot of the girls who are now in their 40s, we took them and to sacred places and we actually called them back. I forgot to tell the people here when they leave to call their spirit because mm. they'll still be down here. We'll be saying, go home, go home. <laughs> um, but that's what we did. And so, with, and after the doors opened, after the prayers, we thought they said, the grandma said, the first thing we need to do is the coming of age ceremony so we can reteach the girls of that they are co-creator, they're sacred beings, and in order to give life, they have to be able to have life within themselves. And so we started the coming of age ceremony 24 years ago. And then after that, we realized we always, inadvertently, we were shaming people because we'd say, well, my grandma told me this story, and the other one would say, my grandma told me this. And then they'd be looking at us all sad because they didn't have grandmas that told them that way. So we thought, well, this is terrible. We're shaming them. And so then we realized, well, we need to make a safe setting where we can tell those stories. And then, like my granddaughter Mia sitting over here, I heard her the other day. She was telling somebody. She said, you know, a long time ago up north, there was a woman who left her husband. And I listened to her and I thought, oh, that was the story we told. So now the kids are retelling the stories, which was the goal of Water Lily. And we got it from uh, Grandma Ella Deloria. She was born here, and she was one of the first Native anthropologists. And she recorded those stories. And so we, we read Water Lily, and it, it's inspired. Every time the girls read Water Lily, they go into a state of depression because it makes you realize what it was in the 1800s, and we have that no more. And so they would have to grieve it, and we tell them, her grave is here. You can go talk to her. You can go take her coffee and tell her that we're, we're gonna restore that. And so that's what Water Lily is. It's a, my daughter in her thesis, she calls it a resurgence. So it's going back to who we were. And in ceremonies, uh, activities, um, while we were sitting over here at the end of the meeting, one of the uh, people came up to me and they said, Faith, are you preparing all the these young people to do what you're doing? And I said, of course. Here's Mia over here, here's Lauren over here, here's Tawny. All those girls that were out there, they all know how to do that stuff and there's more. You know, there's um, probably about 75 of those girls that are acti actively involved that have, uh, some have grown up. And now they will say, when I grow up and I'm in Ishnati, which was not possible when we first started. And so these little girls have that as an intention and we're gonna do that in a couple of weeks. They'll say, when I'm there, so now we have three generations of families that have been in Ishnati. Mm -hmm. So, yeah.